At Liveworks, I saw a presentation on the worst assembly in the world, and the presenter used knurling in a part in order to make the regeneration time a lot longer. And if you're unfamiliar with knurling, it's the little bumps that you might have on a handle in order to make something easier to grasp or hold on to. And I wanted to create it in a real part like a ratchet handle, so I start off by downloading a model. As I've done in other videos, I've gone to b2b.partcommunity.com and searched for a ratchet handle and found a nice detailed model in order to use. Back over to Creo Parametric, let's start off by creating a brand new part and I'm going to call it knurling for lack of creativity. I'm going to use my part default template and then click the OK button and now I'm going to import geometry, but before I do that, I know that I'm going to use a part with a lot of details, and I'm going to make very small features. And when I did a dry run of this, I found out that I needed to increase the accuracy of the model. To do that, I'll go to Model Properties, which you normally get to from File, Prepare, Model Properties, but that's a command that I use so often that I've put it in my Quick Access Toolbar. And here we have accuracy, and for some reason my default template, I've never changed it from the default relative to absolute. Let me change that, and I need to change the value down. Let's remove a bunch on here, change this to .0001, and then click the Regenerate button. And in that way, I've got the accuracy updated. Let's click the Close button. Now I'm going to import my geometry. I'll go to the Get Data Overflow menu and choose Import. And let's see, where did I put that file? Here we have the step file. And I'm going to use my default profile, which I showed how to create in another video. Let's click the OK button. And you see a preview of the geometry that's going to be created. I'm happy with that. Let's hit the check mark and I've got my part in here. Let's turn on our datum axis and datum plane visibility and I notice that I don't have a plane going through the middle of the part and I'm going to need an axis for patterning later on. So let's create an axis down the middle cylinder and then click the OK button and with the axis still selected I'm going to create a datum plane I'll hold down the control key to select the datum plane called top and rather than it being offset by an angle I'm going to make it parallel to the datum plane called top and then click OK. I've got the geometry that I want and I notice that there's a little too much detail imported in here. I've got these little grooves created where I actually want to put my knurling so I'm going to remove that geometry from the part. As I showed in another video you can select geometry in this case, I'm going to hold down the control key to select a bunch of the grooves and even this big radius in here. And then from the quick access toolbar, I can choose the remove command. And you can see a preview of the resulting geometry. That's what I want. Let's hit the check mark. And now my part is ready for knurling. And the way that we're going to do this knurling is by two helical sweeps, one left-handed, one right-handed. Let's go into the helical sweep command. And if I go to the references tab, it's in red because it doesn't have the helix profile. Let's click the define button. And I'm going to define my profile on the datum plane that I just created. And for the orientation, this is going to have the datum plane right face the bottom of the screen. I know I want to use this as a reference later on, so I'm going to select that surface itself and then click the sketch button. And let's go to our sketch orientation. Let's turn off our datum plane and datum axis visibility for clarity. And I'm going to put in a vertical center line for my axis of revolution. And I'm going to hold down the right mouse button. Oops, I still had it selected. Hold down the right mouse button and go to References because I'm going to use this actual edge over here. And also the silhouette edge of the part. That's good. I can click Solve and then Close. And for my profile, I'm going to sketch a straight line 
and I'm going to start right at that intersection and I'm going to make it go beyond the part a little distance just to make sure that my grooves from the helical sweep go all the way past the bottom edge and let's create a dimension just from the end of this line down to the bottom over here. I'm going to make it a small value of 0 0.025. That's good for my profile. Let's hit the check mark. And I'm starting off, this one is going to be right handed, the next one is going to be left handed. I want this to remove material and I want to define the sketch now. Be aware that if you hold down the right mouse button, you'll get the pop up menu and the mini toolbar, and you can access the sketch right from the mini toolbar in Creo Parametric 6.0. And for the shape of the sketch, I'm just going to make some lines. And by the way, I'm taking this from the technique is from PTC they have a video on this I'm basically doing the same thing that they did let's use equals to make an equilateral triangle and we just have this one dimension over here let's make this a value well, let's start off with 0 0.02 and when you do it I recommend that you play around with your different values for the size and also the pitch, which I'll change in a second. So right now we have a very small pitch value, which will give us a lot of revolutions around here. But for knurling, you want a pretty big value. I happen to know that the length of this is about 0.6. I noticed in the PTC video, they start off with a pitch value of around 0.4, and that gives you essentially a twist and a half going around here. I'm going to change that later on just to show you the effect of it. But I'm happy with the cut that's being created in the model. Let's hit the check mark. And now let me turn on my axis display because with that feature still selected, we're going to create a pattern. And this is going to be an axis pattern. I'll select that. Oops, I accidentally selected fill. Let's go to the drop down list, make sure we choose axis, and then pick this axis about over here. We will use the angular extent option. I have another video on axis patterns for more information about this. And we'll start off with 12 going around here uh, because that was what was used in the PTC video. But again, I highly recommend that you experiment around with the values, and I'll show that later on. Let's hit the check mark. And there is our first helical sweep created in the model. And you'll notice that it doesn't go all the way through up to the top edge. And when I was doing the second sweep, I found a happy accident that takes care of that. So don't worry about that. Let's create our second helical sweep. And for the helix profile, let's click the define button. Again, we're going to use the same datum plane as before for sketching on and the same orientation reference, this bottom surface, and then click sketch. Let me go to my sketch orientation, sketch view. And as before, let's throw in our vertical center line right on top of our center axis and add in a couple more sketch references. Oops. Deselect the center line. One second, I've got a cat on my lap. Uh, kitty, give me a few minutes. All right, let's go to references, and then I'm going to pick this sliver of the edge here as a reference, and also this edge over here. Let's click the solve button and then close. And by the way, you don't actually have to hit the solve button. When you click the close button, it'll solve for you. And sketch a line just starting from there and going beyond over here as before. Let's deselect everything and then right click to get to the dimension command quickly and easily. And same 0 0.025 past the end of that just to make it go through the entire feature. Be aware that the start point is up here at the top, which is what I want, but you could actually select the bottom and then right click and oops, select the bottom vertex and then right click, ah, I'm not getting it for some reason. Uh, you could actually change the start point. Oh, I'm still in dimension mode. Let me middle click to get out of dimension mode. Pick the button, right click, and then choose start point. And by the way, a little nice tip in sketch mode. If you're ever having trouble do something, hit the middle mouse button once to make sure you're out of whatever operation you might still be in. 
And to get out of Sketcher, I can right click and then hit the check mark. And as before, this is going to remove material, but this one is going to be left handed instead of right handed. And for the pitch value, let me change that to the same value that we used before. And then right click and get to our sketch. And the sketch, I'm going to do exactly the same as before. Let's sketch and try to make sure it doesn't snap into anything. Oops. Just want to make sure I'm not going to get any unwanted dimensions or constraints in here. And let's go to equals. And let's change this to 0 0.015. I think that's what I used before. Maybe I used 0.2. If I did something different, I'll change it later on. Whoa! That's way too big, 0 0.02. There we go. And hit the check mark. And there we see a preview of the geometry as it is slicing through here. That's good. Let's hit the check mark. And with that helical sweep still selected, let's go to pattern. Change from the default pattern type of dimension to axis. And pick this axis over here. Change angular extent. Let's go to get a total of 12 members going around here. And then hit the check mark. And there we have our knurling created. And like I mentioned, uh, you want to play around with these values. I see that my knurling leaves essentially really short diamonds in the vertical dimension. So let's play around with a few of the different options in here. First off, I'm going to go to helical sweep and let's edit definition. And I'm going to change the value first from 0.4 to 0.6. So I wanted to play around with having a pitch value that corresponded to the entire length, approximate length of this over here. So we get one loop going around over here. Let's hit the check mark. And similarly, let's go to the second helical sweep and edit definition and change this pitch value as well. And to make this easier on myself, I could create a parameter for the pitch value and then write relations between both of those pitch value dimensions and my new parameter. And that way I just change one parameter and the entire thing updates. And so now I'm getting triangles that are a little longer and I'm going to change it one last time. I found a value that I liked. If I change this and this particular one to use a value of one, it's not going to go all the way around in one revolution. And do the same thing at a definition of the pitch value and change this. And hit the check mark. And so now I get the, tr the diamonds big like I like them or I'm actually more, you know, sort of like right angles as I want them. If I don't have as much knurling going around here as I would like, we could edit definition of the pattern and maybe try doing 15 members going around here. Hit the check mark. And one more time, edit definition, 15. Like I mentioned with the pitch value, I could create a parameter at the part level and then write relations between both of those uh, number of instances in the pattern. And that way, just change the value in the parameters dialog box and have both of them update. So that is another level of automation that you could take for incorporating your design intent. And of course, another thing that you could play around with is the uh, dimensions in the section of the helical sweep if you wanted to try to have a different size for the grooves. But in this way, we've got our nice knurling here on the part. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.